<laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Is my mic working? I don't know. Perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone. This is a small stage, so uh, I'll uh, uh, hopefully, if, if you guys see me getting too close to the edge, just please say something <laughs> so that I don't uh, tumble. But at least it's not too far. And I didn't wear heels today, so I should be fine. So um, I'm actually really glad that Kristen did not insist on giving me a, a long introduction because I actually find it quite embarrassing <laughs> to, to listen to all of those things about me. Although I know I'm wonderful, um, it's a little bit, <laughs> um, it's a little bit hard. Um, but I did want to give you a little bit of introduction about myself mostly so that some of the things I say and do today won't be tremendously weird. So uh, one of the things about me is I have an engineering degree. So that means a little bit of this presentation might get a little bit geeky or weird. So um, don't mind that. I also am a professional uh, coach. So I do some coaching uh, with corporate clients and small businesses and all sorts of stuff. Um, there, so I will uh, make you do just a teeny bit of soul searching. And then um, I also, um, I'm a parent and um, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, so I kind of dabbled a little bit in some fashion um, business early on, and then now I have my own coaching and training business. So I kind of have a dual life. Um, I'm working uh, full time and then I have a business on the side. So that's really what qualifies me to be up here today and to talk about energy because I have a lot of it um, and I need a lot of it uh, with all of the different roles in my life. Uh, so that's a little bit about why I'm here. But what I'm not is a medical doctor. So I will attempt to give you just a teeny bit of advice about some physical stuff. Um, but I'm not a doctor, so don't run out of here saying, you know, Stephanie said that eight hours is the right amount of sleep, and so that's what I'm going to do from now on. Um, I'm just giving you some tips uh, from my experience, from uh, my experience with clients, and then some of the research that I've done. But most of the presentation isn't going to be in the physical realm uh, so much. It's really going to be uh, practical tips that hopefully you can use. So uh, I want to know a little bit more about you because I already know a lot about myself and you guys will learn way more than you ever wanted to learn about me as we go on. Um, so who's an entrepreneur here? A oh, couple people. All right. Good. Wonderful. All right. Anybody corporate or kind of public sector? No, no maybe. Yeah, maybe. A little. Anybody doing both? Anybody living the double life like me? Nope, nobody living a double life uh, by myself there. Um, oh, by the way, I love this definition of entrepreneur. So the art of turning an idea into a customer. I just think that that's great. Someone else may have said it, but where I most recently read it was um, on that report. Um, how many of you guys are energized? Not, no, that's why you're here, right? To get some, to figure out how to get energized. So then you fit into the exhausted category. You guys remember the uh, Energizer Bunny um, that kept going and going and going. So I like to think of myself as the Energizer Bunny of strength. So I just keep going and going and talking and talking about strength, um, as you'll hear in just a minute. And then, uh, yeah, some of you, it might depend on the day or the moment. Um, anybody morning person, people, morning? One, one morning person, yay. Kinda, I hear kinda, so that's like you're a mid-morning person, is that how that works? Um, night owls? Yay, lots of night, lots of, oh, even some people in the back heard that one. Yes, I'm a night owl. Um, yeah, I'm kind of both, so I'm really energized when I wake up in the morning, and then I get my second wind around 9.30 at night, uh, so a little bit of both there, too. Um, yeah, uh, any of you just not just kind of showed up randomly? I think I heard a few people, I was just walking by, or a lot of you were already here, you didn't uh, necessarily come. Well, whatever brought you here today, I hope that you take away at least just one tip uh, that helps you to get just a little bit more energy. So why bother with trying to get more energy anyway, right? Um, so I don't actually know much about, about Mark Cuban, um, but I do like to watch Shark Tank. Any Shark Tank fans? Yes, no, maybe yes, couple people, yes. So that's pretty much the only show I watch on live TV anymore is uh, Shark Tank. And um, so one of the things that Mark Cuban says quite often um, in various forms, one or another, is that you know business is this 24 by 7 job and there's always someone out there to kick your butt, since this is mixed company. Um, I won't say exactly what he says, but um, it's really, uh, there's people out there, there are competitors, you know, he's really in the sports world, he owns the Dallas Mavericks, and so um, he says that it's even, you know, more competitive than sports, because at least sports, you go, you do your game, you know where your competitors are, but business, there's people lurking, you may not even know that they're your competitors until they jump out with the product uh, ready to get you. So uh, the point here is that you really do need uh, some personal energy, especially if you're an entrepreneur, to kind of keep that going. 
And then the second thing, if you read the description that I, that I said I would talk a little bit about, is how to engage your team. Uh, so for those of you who are working with a team of folks, um, it's really important to engage your team as well. Um, and there's a little bit of research on this. Um, so Gallup said that 25% of the folks that are in their engagement database, so people who say that their employees and their teams are really engaged in the business that they're doing, that they have a considerably higher profitability and productivity rates. So it's really important to ensure that your team is engaged and energized. And uh, similarly, um, they say that organizational commitment, sorry, am I in the way there, that organizational commitment has more impact on business um, performance than vice versa. So it's more important that you're committed to your job um, uh, than um, just your overall performance. So uh, it's very important. And then, so my formula here is you want to energize plus you engage, and that will enhance your results. So my question is to you, where do you get your energy? Does this look familiar to anyone? How many of you guys drink energy drinks? Oh, coffee? OK, so there's a few coffee. All right, how many cups of coffee do you drink? Two. Two? OK, yeah, that's not too bad. How about you? Two or three, okay, we're going up. <laughs> Anybody want to admit to more than that? One big one. One big one, so yeah, so one, yeah, that's the other thing. People say, oh, I only drink one cup of coffee, but it's like, you know, the, what is it, 96 ounce, you know, super, super duper big gulp or whatever um, that people get these days. Uh, so I'm uh, certainly not here to bash uh, energy drinks or caffeine. Um, because goodness knows there are all days when we need it. Um, but what I really want to ask you is, you know, do you want to be high on chemicals or do you want to be high uh, on life? Do you want to have sort of that natural energy um, that comes from living a fulfilled life? So, you know, uh, like I said, went to engineering school. So when I talk about energy formulas, these are the kind of formulas that I'm usually talking about. But looking at these gives me bad flashbacks of summer school uh, physics class. <laughs> so this is not what I'm talking about from an energy formula perspective. Instead, I have my own formula for energy. And that formula is E equals P plus A max. Um, so what I mean by that is uh, we have energy equals the physical portion plus a maximization of your assets where your assets um, are represented by the acronym STEER uh, that we'll go through in just a moment. So for those of you following um, in your handout, this is, uh, this is your energy formula. So as I said, physical is the foundation. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I'm actually not super great at this. I try to do what I can uh, when I can. Um, but this, but from all the research and all of my uh, clients that have great energy, this seems to be um, the, the critical foundational formula, is being able to get your daily exercise, uh, being able to eat fruits and vegetables. Although I looked at this slide last night and I said to myself, there's really only fruit there. And I think that's like a <laughs> subliminal thing there because I can easily get in the fruit. I have a banana in my bag right now, but the vegetable thing, not so much. Um, although I do have a really good recipe for spinach smoothies and you can't taste the spinach at all. So anyone's interested in that, come, come talk to me. Oh, there's a spinach smoothie fan. Is that even a spinach smoothie in your hand? That is outstanding. Awesome, love it. Uh, vitamins, quick thing on vitamins, if you're uh, taking a crappy vitamin, you might as well um, stop because you're wasting your time and wasting your money. Uh, so I would really recommend that you invest in a decent vitamin, especially if you're one of those folks who doesn't do so well on the fruit and vegetables and all the different colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, invest in a good one. And to me, the way you can tell is if you don't take your vitamin for a week and you don't notice any kind of difference at all, your vitamin probably isn't working. I can tell a difference in my hair and my nails um, as well as in my energy. Uh, water, super important, uh, making sure that you do that, and then getting rest. So last night I said, I could practice this just a little bit more, or I could just go to bed. And for me, it's more important to get an extra half an hour, 15 minutes, hour of sleep than to do more work, because then I can get up and be more productive. So all of this is common sense. You guys have heard all this before. I'm not going to dwell on any of this. But common sense is not always common practice. And I highlighted the word practice here because it is uh, something that you do have to practice, something that you have to turn into a ritual so that it becomes habit, so that you don't have to uh, worry about it. So what if you're one of those people who hates to, to do whatever, exercise, I hate, you know, I get a lot of guys, I hate to drink water, water is boring, it doesn't taste like anything, um, that kind of thing. Um, you know, sleep is for when you're dead, all of those kind of things. So what if you hate to do it? 
So you have to figure out what your key to success is. So for me, uh, my key to success is uh, for exercise is pay, play, or persevere. Uh, so uh, I just started with the, the pay again yesterday. I decided to pay a personal trainer again um, to put together something, a program that I can do at home, and I'm feeling it um, from yesterday, so that's the other reason I might fall off the stage. Um, so pay works for me. Um, play, so finding something that I can do with friends. You know, I signed up for a women's half marathon and ran it with a bunch of girlfriends, and that was a ton of fun. Or just plain persevere. So the other thing I did is I decided on January 1st I was going to exercise every day for the rest of my life. Um, because if I skip a day or two days or three days, then it becomes five weeks. So um, that's something I did a few years ago, and I did it for 250 days straight, um, and it worked really well. But the day I stopped, I didn't do it again for a year and a half. So <laughs> back on that bandwagon, and this time it's uh, for good. So you have to find whatever your key is uh, to whatever uh, helps you from the physical perspective. So the second part of our formula is maximizing your assets. And there will be a few more interactive parts in just a second. So for those of you who are feeling sad and lonely out there, just staring at me, um, as beautiful as I am, uh, don't worry, it's coming. Um, so uh, steer uh, your assets. And so, you know, you can think of whatever analogy makes you happy if, you know, you're the captain of your destiny, you know, the, you know when I do um, women's leadership classes, I talk about, you know, to lead her ship, you know, leadership. Um, so lots of different things that you can think about it. But whatever it is that you're trying to steer, whatever your life is, uh, the keys to that are your strengths, your thirst, your experiences, environments, and relationships. So this is the key to more energy. Once you've got the physical component down, then the rest of this is the key. And that really starts with the foundation of understanding, knowing, leveraging your strengths. And I like to think of strengths as the intersection between character and competence. So how many of you guys have heard those Walgreens ads where they say, we're at the corner of healthy and happy, and now they've started to get, a couple people, and now they've started to get really weird and put other things, like substitute other words in there. So they're kind of cute, kind of funny. Like I think I saw one that was like at the corner of 1 a.m. and crying baby or something like that. So they, um, they're starting to really play with that. But um, your strengths are really at the intersection of your character and competence, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So what is it that I mean by strengths? So strengths are really, you know, defined by um, Strength Finder, um, which is a book um, supported by Gallup. So your patterns of recurring thought, feeling, or behavior. So it's really about how you go about doing things. What is your filter on the world? What is your lens on the world? How do you see things? How do you get them done? Um, they're also your values in action, right? So, you know, if you really uh, value security or you really value fun and creativity, um, those definitely impact your strengths. And then there's this give and take component that a lot of people forget about. So um, examples for me, uh, two of my strengths, which you may have guessed already. Um, so more on the character side is a zest. So um, I actually took, a, took an assessment, and it told me that zest is one of my strengths, which was so exciting because I kind of went through uh, life thinking that, you know, people are, are always look, walking around and looking like this, and I like to wear bright, shiny clothes and be bright and happy and smile at people, and um, I really thought that I was just weird and odd. And then I come to find out that my zest is actually a strength. It's actually um, good for the world, and it's something that I should be doing more of. So that was really exciting. But there's that give and take component. So I need to give my zest. I need to um, you know, spread my vitality. But I also need it. I need to gain energy from, from the audience, from the crowd. And then my other strength, um, more on the competent side, is around communication. So other than the fact that I talk way too fast for someone who stands on a stage, um, generally I like to communicate. I like to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one, I like to talk to groups. I like to stand on stage. Uh, verbal communication in particular is very easy for me. But I also need communication. I need to be heard. So it's not enough just for me to talk to myself. Um, I have a need to be heard. So there's definitely a give and take portion to your strengths. There's been a lot of research out there. Um, I have pages and pages of it, and some of it's at the link below. You can email me if you're interested in some of the, the strengths research. But really knowing and using your strengths, it's been shown that you can be more confident, more energetic. Um, there's a ton of resilience, so the ability to really get past um, hard roadblocks, which is especially important if you're an entrepreneur. 
um, higher performing, more engaged, happier, um, all the well-being scales that they use in positive psychology. So all of these uh, things can be yours just from knowing a bit about your strengths. So a little exercise for you, and I'm going to get out of the way. Um, but if you're looking at this list here, which of these do you think are the strengths of entrepreneurs? So I'm going to give you a few minutes just to look at this list, and if you need to write them down, you can, or if you can think of them. But just think of, you know, maybe three or five that you would say, that this is what an entrepreneur has to have in order to be successful. in the back because I stopped talking. <laughs> like, what happened? I got some peace and quiet for a minute. Everybody got about three or five written down or in your head somewhere? I see a couple folks still writing. I'll give you a few more seconds. All right, we good to go? Yep. Okay. Well, if you're not too late, too bad. So, um, anybody want to tell me what's on your list? Perseverance. Perseverance, super. Was that a yes, amen to that? Well, I'm a, I'll add one. <laughs> oh, add one? What is that? Uh, I think uh, bravery. I think that bravery is like, I mean, maybe substitute courage. Bravery, courage, yep. And there's, and for all of these, there's like four names because people use lots of names. But yep, courage. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Leadership, good. Purpose. Purpose. Optimism. Optimism. Creativity, super, wonderful. Anybody else? Social intelligence. Social intelligence, great. So you guys are smarter than the average bears. Most people, um, so there's some that we heard, definitely bravery, uh, creativity, yep, leadership is definitely um, some that we get, perseverance, social intelligence, uh, purpose. Yes, actually, I think we heard all of those except for love of learning. Um, so yep, these are the ones that, uh, that you would think would be there. But when they did the study, this is what they came up with. When they studied um, entrepreneurs uh, in all sorts of different businesses and different types, they actually found that the top five character strengths were authenticity, uh, leadership, one is one that someone said, fairness, uh, gratitude, and zest. Woohoo! Um, surprise, surprise there. Creativity was in the bottom five. And that's not to say that entrepreneurs aren't creative, but what they actually found in this study is that this combination um, of, of things really created, I think someone said, social intelligence. So this combination created a social intelligence that enabled them to make the connections that enabled success as an entrepreneur. Um, and these are the general population, uh, what they found. I got into this really bad habit of calling it gen pop because I watched way too much, um, uh, what was that prison show? Um, not prison break. Not <laughs> prison break, but the other one. So now every time I see that, I think, orange. I think, uh, no, orange is the new black. That's my new one. But there was the one that was on for a really long time. Oz, yes, Oz. And they just said gen pop all the time. So now I think gen pop. I'm like, stop it. That's a prison term. Um, anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> the prisoners, but the rest of us, uh, uh, fairness is shared, but curiosity, love, judgment, and kindness. And zest is in the bottom five for the average person, which really makes me sad. But that's why I'm here today, to spread a little zest um, around. So really interesting study. I have more information on that. And of course, in every study, there was like 10 footnotes that say, we need to do more studies on this to validate these results. But at the end of the day, um, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, so a couple of things I wanted to mention. One, this character strength survey is free, um, and you can get it at viacharacter.org. Um, it's out of the whole positive psychology um, thing that Martin Seligman is really popular, uh, had really popularized, but um, there's also a VIA Institute on Character um, that provides this free survey. So you can either go to viacharacter.org, V-I-A as in values and action, via character, or you can contact me for more details on that. And then Gallup has actually just recently in the last few months introduced a entrepreneurial strength finder. And there are 10 qualities that they have found um, that entrepreneurs have, and you can go and take that uh, test as well for a mere $40, um, and it will tell you, um, it will prioritize them in order, because the, the intent from the Gallup side is that everyone who's an entrepreneur has these 10, and they just prioritize them in a specific order and let you know these are the ones that show up most for you. So 
Um, this is a lot of the work that I do with clients, is helping them understand their strengths, um, helping them then translate those strengths into brands, into strategies um, that enable their success. So, um, I kind of covered this slide already. So how do you discover your strengths? So one is you learn to strength spot. So you learn to see strengths in others um, and, and then also see them in yourself. Um, another one is um, you, can, you can kind of think about what gives you energy because if, you, if there's something that gives you energy, so if being creative or if loving other people or if you know, making sure that something is fair, that there's justice in the world, if that gives you energy, then that's likely a strength. Clearly what comes with ease, um, things that are easy for you are likely a strength. And then the one that everybody gets, which is what you do well. Um, so ease, energy, and excellence are kind of the three uh, main components of strength. You can obviously take an assessment and you can choose from a list, but I would definitely not recommend choosing from a list because most people like to lie to themselves just a little bit and say, I've got leadership and teamwork and creativity and all of the things that you're supposed to have versus really being honest with themselves. So I really recommend that folks take an assessment. Um, you can also ask people, either formally or informally, I suggest that if you work with any kind of team on a regular basis at all, that you do some sort of informal, just sensing, you know, a lot of people do 360 feedback surveys and they have their boss do it for them and the results go to their manager and this and that and the other. I don't think any of that's necessary. What you want is people to give you, hopefully even anonymously, because um, then people can be really honest, an honest assessment. And it can be something really simple, like you can be in a meeting and pass around a sheet of paper with your name at the top and then ask them to put down you know, two to three words that describe you and pass, everybody passes their paper around so that when you get it back, you know this is what is good about me. Um, or you can have someone else perform a 360 assessment. I actually sit down with people and do like 15 to 20 minute interviews with their coworkers to really get that information and then summarize it for them. Um, and then of course you can, you can do all of the above together. So uh, we talked about in our STEER model, we talked about thirst. So, um, I mean, excuse me, we talked about strength and now let's talk about thirst. So your thirsts are really your passions or your interests, the thing that really gets you up in the morning and gets you going, the thing that you would keep doing forever and ever and ever if you know the clock or your kids or your spouse or your bank account or whatever your constraint of the day is didn't make you stop. Can anybody tell me what that would be for them? What's your passion? Don't tell me you guys don't have passion. I'm not going to move on from the slide unless at least one person tells me about their passion. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. All right, we're gonna go over here. Yeah. Uh, providing uh, leadership for nonprofits. Providing leadership for nonprofits. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, storytelling. Storytelling. Wonderful. Yes. Creating games. Creating games. Perfect. Wonderful. Anybody else want to add? Yes. Learning. 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 Love of learning. I love it. How the brain works. How the brain works. Like in a neuroscience kind of way? Well, I want to make computers that work like the brain. I don't really care about how the brain works other than I want to make a computer that works like the brain. Wow, that's awesome. Make a computer that works like the brain. That is exciting work. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you guys have passions. You guys worried me for just a little bit there. I was kind of like, oh, good gracious, this is going to be a tough crowd. Um, but yeah. Your passion should be something that you're thinking about. So if you haven't quenched that thirst yet, whatever it is, go do it. And stop making excuses, whatever you have to do. Like I said, I have, so I'm a mother of two young kids, four and six. Um, I have a full-time job that is like 40 plus hours per week. I have my side business doing the strengths coaching thing because I love it so much. I'm on the school board and um, I'm also um, on a committee at a local nonprofit at ICANN. So, I mean, you can do it all, um, but you have to be living your passion. I actually just recently changed from a more operational job into human resources, even though it's killing my engineering identity, um, because that's what I'm about. I'm about helping people. So, um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit passionate about this, but find your purpose um, and then just go do it. And if you haven't found your purpose, find someone, a coach, a friend, a relative, a pastor, anybody who can help you find your purpose, because there's really no point in living life if you haven't figured out what you're here to do. All right, off the soapbox, but still here because I haven't fallen off yet. Okay, so experiences. Um, your experiences are uh, made up in three categories, at least in my little brain. Uh, so there's your past, your present and your future.
so your past um, is really about what can I learn? So obviously you can spend some time reminiscing and get great joy from the reminiscing perspective, um, but a lot of people get stuck in the past and they get stuck in the past thinking about what other people did to them or what you know, they did wrong, and the past should really just be all about a learning experience. You can't do it over, it's all done, can't do anything about it, so it should really be about what can you learn. Then we all just kind of skip to the present and we start thinking about the future, right? So what do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want my kids to grow up? And what am, how much money do I want in my bank account? And what do I want my business to look like in a year? And that's fantastic because you, as I just said, you have to have a passion, you have to have, and you have to have a path to get to that passion. But we skip over this huge thing in the present and we forget to be present in every activity, in every moment in time, um, to be present, to think about what am I here for? What's going on? What's going on around me? you know just to sit and be still for a minute you know I made it I had to walk back and forth between buildings at work all the time and it used to really piss me off especially during the summer and then I decided instead of being mad about it how about I use this opportunity to um, just enjoy the environment so now I sit or not sit now I walk and I listen and I can hear birds chirping and I can slightly smell the honeysuckles and now that seven minute walk is just my nice peaceful retreat I've been trying my whole life to meditate. I can't meditate because I can't stop my brain from, from moving and I can't stop my mouth from moving. Um, but now this is my kind of meditation because I have to walk back and forth just a few days. Same thing with the parking lot. It used to piss me off if I'd be at work one minute late. Now the parking spaces are gone. Same thing, this is my opportunity to relax, rejuvenate, meditate, think about my day, plan, and uh, enjoy all of the beautiful nature that is around me. Um, so be present. And then the other thing is focus. and. Um, uh, one of the things that we sometimes have a lot of trouble with, especially as entrepreneurs, is focus. Because we have a bright new idea every single day. I don't know if you guys have this problem, but probably five times a day I have a bright new idea. Sometimes it's a new business idea, sometimes it's an idea of what I currently have, something it's, sometimes it's something I want to put in my slide deck, but I have these new ideas. And what I need to learn to do is focus, right? So um, that doesn't mean that you can only do one thing at a time because clearly uh, that's not what I'm doing, but just kind of center that focus around what your purpose is and focus on whatever that present moment is. Uh, the next one is environment. So thinking about your environment and it's pretty easy, you know, to kind of think about the physical environment. Um, and that's both at home and at work and wherever else you spend time. So if you spend time commuting like an hour and a half a day, then that's an environment that you need to think about as well. But certainly your physical environment. Is it cluttered? Is it inspirational? Is it, does it give you energy to be in the environment that you work in? Does it give you energy to be in the environment that you live in, right? You know, a lot of relationship counselors, the first thing they ask couples who have problems is, what does your bedroom look like? If your bedroom has, you know, your kids' toys in it, then maybe it's reminding you of your kids instead of reminding you of what else you'd rather be doing in the bedroom, right? Um, get rid of your TV, right? Don't, you know, my husband and I, we sit in our laptops in bed next to each other and that doesn't <laughs> really get anybody going. Um, so think about what is your physical environment? What is that physical space? Does it energize you? Does it inspire you? And then there's the emotional uh, component as well. What is your emotional environment like? So question for you. What is your most common emotion? What would you say is your most common emotion? And I'll give you guys a few seconds to think about this one because it's a little bit harder fear. than some of the other. Fear, oh wow, that was quick. Somebody, I heard fear. Where was that? Wow. Uh, fear, frustration. All right, what else? Anger. Anger. Didn't we just have a class on that at Gangplank a few weeks ago? You missed, you missed it? You skipped it? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't help. Still angry. Okay, so fear, anger, frustration. So, Excitement, woohoo, good, I'm glad we have one excitement. But yeah, I mean, a lot of us spend a lot of time in fear and anger and frustration and sadness and just like bad, icky stuff. And you need to get rid of that bad, icky stuff. And if you can't get rid of it on your own, find someone who can help you get rid of it because it's not helping you. It's not helping you at all, not even one little bit. So really think about what is your emotional environment and how can you reframe each situation similar to what I was talking about with the parking lot because I used to be really pissed. I used to be really, really pissed because I'm like, now I got to wake up earlier in the morning so that I could just so I can get my parking space. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now I'm going to bed earlier so I can wake up earlier so that I can skip a 10 minute walk from the parking lot to the front door. 
Wouldn't it be easier just to wake up at the same time and take the walk and figure out some way to make use of the walk? So every single situation in your life can somehow be reframed for the better. And like I said, if you have trouble doing that yourself, find someone who can help you uh, do that. But keep tabs on your emotional environment, okay? So now every time you hear environment, I don't want you to think of that little world globe and like Al Gore and that kind of stuff. I want you to think about you and your physical environment and your emotional environment. Relationships, my favorite. I assume you two are you two together, you couple? That's so cute. Um, so relationships, and I'm not just talking about uh, relationships, um, like intimate relationships or couple relationships. I'm talking about friendships, I'm talking about family, and I'm talking about coworkers. Because to be honest, your coworkers, you're around um, probably just as often, sometimes more often than your spouse, significant other, or other people who choose to live in the house with you. Um, so you need to think about um, all of those relationships, even suppliers, clients, um, all of those people, because sometimes your clients can be some of the most draining people in the world. You hang on to them because they're paying you, but they're just sucking the life out of you every single time you meet with them. So really think about, you know, what's the volume of relationships do I ha that I have? Do I have too many or do I have too few? I know I got to a point last year where I had too few relationships. I was so focused on my business and I had just joined the school board and I'm like, my life this year is all about, you know, my business and moving forward. And I realized that all of my friends were slowly dropping off and I didn't know what was going on with people and I was seeing updates on Facebook about things, big things that were happening in my friend's life that I didn't know happen until I saw it on Facebook and how incredibly sad that was. So sometimes we have too few, sometimes we have too many, right? We've got our beer buddies and our work buddies and our, you know, our spouse's friends and then you've got, like, I've got kid, you know, mothers that want to play bunko and all this kind of stuff going on. So definitely think about the frequency of your, or excuse me, the volume of your relationships. Think about the frequency. Do you need to see everyone as often? Do you need to see some people more often? Maybe your mother-in-law you need to see less often in your life. Who knows? Um, who is a time sink for you? Who is draining your energy? And then uh, what is the quality of the relationships that you have? And again, this spans coworkers, significant others, friends, family. Truly, what is that quality? What are you investing in those relationships? And what are they giving back? And um, there's really two tests of quality. Um, one, I'm sure you've heard. So the one for your friends is, would they help you move, right? So if you had to move from one location to another, would they gladly, with only you know maybe pizza and sodas or beer or whatever it is that your drink of choice is, would they just help you move? Or are they going to give you a whole bunch of excuses about I'm too busy and this and that and whatever, and you know it's just they don't like you enough to dedicate their time to help you move. The second test is uh, really about um, is about your business relationships. Um, and it's, would these people invest in you, right? Are they willing to go attend a workshop that you're having or, you know, invest financially um, in you? Are they willing to buy your product, right? Or are you just wasting time uh, with some of these relationships? So are they willing to invest in you in any sort of way? Are they willing to help you uh, make it to where you want to go? So that's really one of the, um, some of the things that we can think about from relationships. So now we've kind of finished, oh, clicker don't fill me now, we finished steer, uh, uh, your strengths, your thirst, your experiences, your environment, and your relationships. So now let's kind of put it all together. So I'd like for you guys to turn to a neighbor, um, someone you're sitting by, and just have um, a brief discussion about what is the most energizing experience that you can remember. And if you're an entrepreneur, kind of try to gear it towards you know, something in your entrepreneurial life. If you're not, then don't. Um, but just kind of think about what's the most energizing experience that you can remember. Yes, good. Meet someone next to you. That's what Gangplank is all about, community. So don't be shy. <laughs> oh, you got to do better than that. Although, actually, if you do, if that's like your most energizing thing, then party on. Yes. Well, ever, ever, if you can remember as far as ever, then yeah. <laughs> Probably in your adult life. <laughs> So like going from 
on one thing that's maybe not so successful to something really big? Yeah, so basically I just like threw out like a really simple game that I poured a lot of energy into, so I had a lot of polish, yeah. and Cartoon Network noticed it, so now I'm making a new game for them. Amazing. Yeah, so just that, just, uh, yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, All right, start wrapping it up if you can. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. All right, wonderful. I'm glad you guys are able to finish so quickly. Okay, um, that group in the back is really energized. <laughs> Exciting. So, uh, anybody want to share their most energizing experience? Wow, we, we got, the volunteers are warmed up now. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so the dot com bubble has just burst, and so I knew the company, the little company that I was working for, was going to go out of business. So I quit and I started a And I bought a house. I had no job, right? So this is a total, total uh, housing bubble era type of thing where I bought a house, dated income, because I had no income, right? And I bought this dump in downtown Sacramento. I spent the next two and a half years getting my master's degree, fixing up that house, and I sold it right at the peak of the housing bubble. Outstanding. Yeah. Wow. And that was like a two-year energizing yeah. experience. Well, because I was scared the whole time. <laughs> scared the whole time. <laughs> right. All right. So what, so what was energizing about it for you? Well, it was energizing because I didn't have that job. You know, I didn't have the big corporate job you know, to fall back on. Or, right? I, had to, I, had to do, I had to take the resor what modest resources I had and do something with them to, to make them grow. Cool. Awesome. So you had to depend on yourself and you know, all those wonderful things. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, and get going. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else? I saw another hand somewhere. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So for those of you who didn't hear him, he uh, was able to get an account by himself. And what energized him about it was that he was present. Lovely. Well, I, lo I love that, right? Because you really can't have an energizing experience without being present. And you have to know what drives you. And it sounds both of those examples, I heard a lot about independence, which doesn't, uh, doesn't surprise me at all in a room full of uh, entrepreneurs or business owners or the like, right? Awesome. Cool. Anyone else? Yes. When everybody's in a frame of mind of not saying no. Mm. Like, oh, let's go. No, what about this? What about this? And just can go on for hours, just letting it flow. And <coughs> just, it's just present and just a lot of fun. And it's energizing because we left, like, we didn't want to leave. We left feeling more like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's a great experience. Yeah, because that one, it includes other people and people being open and, you know, brainstorming and really being excited and feeding off of each other's energy. That's great. Thanks. Anyone first? Uh, and, and after the road, like, just for fun, it's a 
suddenly crossed like 50 and 50,000 downloads. Uh, awesome. I'm like, ooh, I have never <laughs> anticipated. This is something that unexpected mm, yeah. of labor. But that's, that's pretty yeah, so the app that you wrote cost 50,000. Uh, yeah, that's great because, yeah, something unexpected, something that you've poured your heart and soul into, you didn't know how other people, so it's kind of that validation. Perfect, wonderful. Did I see something else around here? Yeah. This side, this side I know, I was going to, thank you, I was going to point that out. I don't know about this side. You guys obviously have not been listening to me enough, so I will point in this direction when I speak from now on. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Uh, I was on a team where the, the project we were working on, uh, you know, usually the, the excitement kind of comes from the top level down where they're saying, be excited about this project, but it takes a long time to get to that point where it's actually you know, functional. But I was actually on a project where you know, right from the beginning, from uh, the prototype phase, it was exciting and it was fun. And, uh, and the team could feel it. You could see that energy of everything clicking and coming together from the beginning to the, uh, from the bottom up as opposed to from the top down. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's always great when you get that kind of grassroots energy and feeling like everybody's ready um, to go and be there. And yeah, that it wasn't something that someone told you, be energized. Because um, yeah, I can't stand up here today and tell you to be energized. You have to feel it from the inside. So great. Perfect example. And thanks for representing uh, this side of the room. Perfect. Well, what I want you to notice about that, I want you to kind of hold that feeling, remember what it felt like, remember uh, you know, why you felt energized. So that when you have those times when you're feeling less energized, you can replicate it. And think about the qualities in STEER and what did it use? Were you using your strengths? Were you living your passions, right? Were you in the right environment? Were you really present to your experiences? Were you having relationships that really uh, clicked and worked with other people? Because those are going to be the elements that are going to bring you energy. So um, for those of, so I promised in my little spiel about this workshop that I would uh, talk about engage your team. But how many folks have teams? A couple? Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Work. work. Yeah. So about a th third-ish of people. Um, so I don't have a lot of time to spend on this anyway, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But this will be relevant even for those of you who are, you know, solopreneurs or whatever the fancy hot word is for that, um, or who primarily work right by yourself or don't have a team or whatever, because you know the team of three, good old me, myself, and I, um, if you're by yourself, you need even more energy. So the good news is everything I've talked to you already about energy works for teams as well. You just have to remember three more simple steps. Know, grow, show, and share. So know, know the strengths of your team. And honestly, know the whole steer of your team, but certainly the strengths and the thirst part, the passions, um, certainly know that of your team. And then know how to best leverage your strengths. There's nothing more disappointing to me. I get invited to go and um, meet with a team and I do like a strengths finder session or something with them and they share all their strengths and then they do absolutely nothing with it. Yeah, that's not what you wanna do. You need to know people's strengths, but then you also need to use them. You need to uh, grow their strengths. Because again, strengths are kind of innate talents or character traits or something like that that you have, but they can also be grown. You can kind of step into your strength. You can um, amplify it, enhance it, make it bigger, make it better, um, hone it in, make it tighter, all of those things. So commit to helping your team grow in their strengths, utilizing their passions, whatever that is. And then consistently assess whether everyone is working within their strengths and help the team to learn how to assess that within themselves. That's really what I do every day is try to help teams do that. And then show and share. Appreciate what people bring to the table. So a lot of times uh, with teams, uh, people will tend to appreciate the results. So good job in finishing that project. Well, and that's great, but you know, a lot of times if you're in a high performing team, you know that the results are gonna come. What's really important is to celebrate how that person got to the result. What about them made it special? So Stephanie, I really love the way you worked with that customer um, in order to help us get the sale versus good job with the sale, right? You can kind of see the difference in terms of giving that person a little extra energy boost. And then ensure that they're sharing their talents with the team, sharing their talents with you, sharing their passions and desires uh, with you as well. So that's really how you engage your team. And I have a whole other workshop on this one, but just kind of a teaser for, for you today for that. So um, as I was preparing for this uh, presentation, I got this brief, and, and I'm almost coming to a close for those of you who might need to leave. But uh, I 
uh, was preparing for this presentation, and good old SRP uh, sent me an email, and they said, um, do you want your energy scorecard? And I was like, oh, fantastic, of course I want my energy scorecard. Unfortunately, they were not talking about my personal energy, they were talking about like electricity going through my house, but same difference, right? They said a person, an energy scorecard is a personalized energy usage feedback. It offers tips to encourage immediate energy saving uh, actions and it allows you to better understand your energy consumption patterns. I'm like, fantastic. Wouldn't it be great for me to have that personally? So what I want you to think of in terms of your E factor, right? And if you guys remember, your E factor is all about your physical plus those steer that I talked about. You should be able to assess your own E factor. How energized are you personally? If you have a team, how energized is your team? and how energized are your results? Are you excited and happy when you get to that win, when you get that 50,000 customers, or is it just like another check of the box because it's become mundane? So think about easily on a scale from one to 10, and I'd like you, if you have all three things to rate, then rate all three. If there's only you and yourself and you don't have many results yet, just rate that. But think to yourself, I'm not gonna make you share, but think to yourself on a scale of one to 10, where zero, or zero to 10, I guess, but no one better be zero. Uh, or else I'm taking you home with me and locking you in a room until you at least get to one. But from zero to 10, um, how exhausted are you or exhilarated or energized? So think to yourself, how much energy do you have? How much energy does your team have? How energized are your results? Everybody got it? Anybody care to share? Six? Sounds like a nice safe number. Not too high, not too low. <laughs> Six. Gives you room to grow. Perfect. I love that glass half uh, full mindset. Yep. Anybody else want to share? Six in the morning and like two in the afternoon. <laughs> Six in the morning, two in the afternoon. Well, great, right? Exactly. That's exactly the point, right? So um, in, in all honesty, what you would really want to do is graph this you know, every hour. That's what psychologists do when they do studies. They used to, I don't know what they do now, they probably have an app on your cell phone, but they used to give you pagers and page you and remind you um, every hour, two hours, or whatever the study is, write down your energy. And that's how they used to do personal energy studies. So you should start thinking about that for yourself, even if you just do it at the beginning of the day or the end of the day, or beginning of the day in the in mid-afternoon or whenever, um, whatever makes sense to you. But pulse yourself and think, how is my energy? And then start to figure out an energy plan. So if two in the afternoon is your um, sucky energy time, then either figure out how to change, change it so that you have more energy at two in the afternoon, or then maybe you make two in the afternoon your play time and you go do your work before and after that, right? So the point is know yourself, have an action plan, and similarly with your team. And then from a results perspective, like I said, just think. Are your results still energized? Are you energizing your customers and your clients and your suppliers when you come in contact with them? Or um, are your results kind of ho-hum and the same as they've been for the last 10, 15 years, however long you've been working? So um, kind of keep that energy scorecard um, in mind. So in review, like I said, your energy is really all about that physical foundation that you have, doing all those common sense things where, you know, common sense isn't so common or uh, common, um uh, common sense isn't necessarily common practice. All that good physical stuff, you're drinking your water, you're getting your exercise, you're getting your rest, you're you know, supplementing with a vitamin if you're not so good at the fruits and vegetables thing, all that kind of stuff is kind of your foundation. And then you're maximizing your assets, maximizing your strengths, which really is the foundation of all of this, your passions, your thirst, your experiences, your environment, and your relationships. And that is how you build energy. So, one final thought. Um, there's someone, apparently, who calls himself Leadership Freak. I actually found him by looking, for the, by looking for an image. Anyway, and he says, your vitality is your responsibility. And I love that, because so many of us give away our vitality like it's someone else. Oh, my husband, my husband IM'd me this morning and said something that I thought was really rude. And then I was like, I just wrote back and I smiled back. To, I gave him a little smiley face back, because I'm like, that's his problem, it's not my problem, right? Your vitality is your responsibility. Um, and it starts with strengths and it ends with you. So those are sort of my final thoughts. Um, so uh, I'm going to make you do one last thing because I'm really mean that way. Uh, so in one word, how would you describe this session? So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to think about it and then I want just one word from each of you on how you would describe this session. And I'm going to cap energizing at 
two. So only two people can say energizing. So like these people over here are really lucky because I'm probably going to start at the end. So you get to cheat if you want to, but everybody can't say energizing. Um, but this is what's energizing to me is to hear what folks have to say. So I'm going to scribble really fast. All right. So I saw over here. Energizing. <laughs> Cheater. Zestifying. What was that? Zestifying. Zestifying. Awesome. Inspiring. Inspiring. Perfect. Okay, great. Motivational. Awesome. You guys are pulling out the thesaurus, aren't you? <laughs> Enlightening. Love it. Perky. <laughs> Perky. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. Anything else? What? Sorry? Informative. Informative. Perfect. Anyone else? You people on that side? <laughs> the ones who are reflective. reflective. Wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? Timely. Don't. Timely. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. All right. So thank you for those kind words. Um, I hope you meant all of them and weren't just like um, feverishly looking up like thesaurus online or something on your phone. Um, but more importantly than giving me all the wonderful feedback, although I do love it. So thank you. Um, you know, what, think about what is the one commitment that you want to make based on what you've heard today? Because if I was just energizing and zest, what was it? Zest, zestifying? I love it. Zestifying. I might be the most zestifying, motivating, enlightening, informative, timely person in the entire universe. But if you go home or back to work or to feed your dog or whatever it is you're going to do next, and you don't do anything, and I mean that with your dog, right? Be happy when you see your dog, and I get to feed my dog this wonderful food. Anyway, if you go home and you do nothing, then I have wasted my time. And like I said, I got a lot to do. Y'all remember all the stuff I got to do? So please make a commitment of at least one thing. Solve your two o'clock problem. You know, get rid of that person who is draining energy out of your life. Um, go home and order some multivitamins on the internet. Go get, what's, what's your name right there? Go get Trudy's smoothie recipe, right? I mean, I eat five cups of spinach a day without even thinking about it. Is that not outstanding, right? So, <laughs> so all of those things, right? Go on the gangplank mile, right? And don't go like this. Go like this, right? Speed walk like the old, you know, when moms used to do that speed walking thing, right? Um, all of that. So make that commitment. So. I dare you to share your commitment with someone nearby, because if you don't say it out loud, then it's just like not doing it. So, and I really, really dare you to actually do it. So I'm going to give you a minute to actually share it with someone next to you. I don't care if you know them or not. All right, so this is the hardest part. I hate shutting down all the wonderful, super exciting, um, energizing conversations, um, but I must. Um, so, anybody want to share their one commitment? Uh, we're yeah. making new relationships. New relationships, outstanding, wonderful. Anybody else? Uh, meeting with a friend of mine about new opportunities. Cool. Talk to a friend of yours about new opportunities. Wonderful. Yes. Living in the moment and enjoying my current project. Yay! Living in the moment and enjoying your current projects. Yes. When you're like really exhausted, like get out, get yourself out by thinking about the stuff that excites you and makes you energized. Awesome, yes, when you're down and um, not feeling energized, thinking about the things that have energized you in the past. Perfect, outstanding, wonderful. Um, thank you guys so much. So one more thing, actually a few, because you guys know I can't just do one thing. Um, so first, I have a raffle, um, not really a raffle. Um, and actually, I should have, because I didn't bring tickets or anything. That was kind of silly. I was going to ask you a question, and then I forgot. Um, all right, so let's see. Can somebody, without looking, tell me all the elements of the energy formula? Trudy thinks Trudy thinks she's gonna go. Trudy, Trudy thinks she's gonna go for it. I'm partially talking about about steer. Huh? Yep. E. Uh huh. Um, maybe. You get, you get Physical. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting it. All right, I see a hand over here. Energy equals physical plus max assets. Assets is steer, strength, thirst, environment, uh, experiences, <laughs> and relationships. Awesome, outstanding, good job. Woohoo! All right, so your prize is a. Um, 
a strength finder assessment. So there's a code right here and you can uh, take the strength finder assessment, not the $40 one. Um, <laughs> but if anybody, if anybody takes the $40 one and they want help, um, you know, or the $10 one or whatever, if you guys take a strengths assessment and you want um, some help, support, understanding what the heck does this mean, what are my strengths anyway, um, I'm strength pro, so that's what I do. Um, so um, I do also, I brought a sign-in sheet um, or business cards, whichever makes you happy. Um, if you want to give me your email, I have a newsletter. I do workshops like this um, all the time, so that's good. I also have flyers for my parent share event. Um, so if you're parents, um, I'm doing a workshop where parents kind of share their successes, their struggles, their strategies, and there's also a strengths-based parenting um, workshop component to that as well. So lots of stuff going on all the time. And I do talk fast, so if you're interested in more information, um, selections of my slides, any of that, like I said, either sign up or take my business card um, or come talk to me afterwards. Either one will work. So any other questions before we end? Super outstanding. Well, you guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much.